thank you avan uh, nehar and iit bombay for the invite i am extremely happy to have with me the three esteemed guests for today's power packed panel discussion i'll introduce you one by one i will start with mr nilesh kulkarni fortunately mr nilesh mr vinith and mr supratik sen all three are very very close to me and i am privileged to work with all three Mr. Nilesh Kulkarni is a household name. Uh, you will not find anybody, especially in Mumbai, who uh, don't know Mr. Nilesh. Mr. Kulkarni was Indian cricketer and Mumbai captain. He is the first one who has envisioned about sports management education in India, and started International Institute of Sports Management. Currently, ISM offers four courses: bachelor's and master's. The degree is by Mumbai University. and two autonomous course on sports event management and sports and wellness management ism has recently received prestigious award under his guidance by the president of india in his active cricketing career mr kulkarni was the first indian to take a wicket in his first ball in test cricket in his debut he played for mumbai 17 years and played for india 4 years Right now, Mr. Nilesh, Mr. Kulkarni is handling multiple portfolios. He is an active member of National Education Board, that is the National Sports Education Board. He is also an advisor and consultant for International Sports University, Maharashtra, which he is upcoming right now. He is a member of FICI Sports Committee, and he is also a member of the CIA Sports Corp. For the audience, we all know about the Khelo India, which. Uh, honorable prime minister has envisioned and started i am very happy to inform that under nilesh kulkarni's guidance ism was the knowledge partner of both khelo india youth games and khelo india university games under his guidance ism has created the standard operating process for khelo india event he is associated with mumbai cricket association he has been in different committees like cricket involvement committee and others i will be introducing uh, mr supratik sen in as a second panelist mr supratik sen is a very household name for those who watch kabaddi and those who plays e sports he is the founder of u sports and he started u mumba u sports sports with none other than ronnie scrubala who was the speaker in one of the entrepreneurship event in iit bombay in earlier days supratik was also member of national rugby team he has captained the national 7 rugby team to the world 7 series in 2003 2004 he <coughs> he has presented the international rugby board that is irb development award in the year 2001 i'll be ha happy to introduce our third panelist mr benith karnik mr benith is a highly accomplished professional with over two decades of experience he is right now the business head of entertainment sports and live events of group m for the audience who is not aware about the group m group m is one of the world's leading media investment company those who specially follow the uh, sports there is a specific report which comes every year that is the sporting nation in the making the entire industry looked after that mr benith kerning is the one who is behind that report he is also the co-author he has co-authored a white paper with nothing none other than i am amdavad he is also the board member he is the editorial board member of sports academia research journal this is india's first sports academia research journal which ism has taken the initiative and just to finish it we all see lot of sponsorship deal we read lot of stuff like bcci deal star deal whatever it is So Benith Kerning is the one who typically controls more than eighty percent sports sponsorship in India. So you can understand the stature of three who are there in the panel. I sincerely thanks to Nilesh, Benith, and Supratik for the taking out the time. Thank you all. For the audience, uh, when we when we keep the panel, the idea is not to have an interaction, but to have some specific outcome and some good learning outcome. so that's how we set up the panel so we have one side cricketer one side he has been running a college another side the business head another side the e sports and all so i'm i'm sure we are going to have lot of you know outcome after the panel discussion so my first question will be for all three we'll start with nilesh and then we'll go to shukrathing and then we'll go to binit 
So right now we have been hearing about sports in India and the sports outside. It's, it's wherever. It's everybody talk about sports or everybody talk about India is lagging behind. Somebody is saying oh, India is progressing. Where do you actually stand from your eyes, Mr. Nilesh? <laughs> First of all, thank you, Avan uh, and the entire committee for inviting me and uh, my colleagues, friends from the sporting industry. It's good to be on the panel with Supratik and Vineet because I get to learn a lot from these two guys who are doing extremely well in the industry. I think uh, if you ask me, uh, the status of the sport is we are a sport loving country. We need to become a sport playing country. Once we start becoming a sport playing country, the development and the growth has a humongous opportunity to become out of 138 billion population. We have the potential to grow faster than anybody else who anticipates the growth of sport in India, a country like India. For me, because I played cricket, you know, it was always a cricket centric country, but to see a growth of other sport like Kabaddi to a certain extent football, uh, they're, they're trying to promote Koko also, which in itself is huge. And now when Supratik and Vinita are on board, I have to mention that the e-gaming, which still has a lot of potential, probably the mapping space and the opportunity space is huge in terms of an opportunity and sky is the only limit where uh, how and how fast and where it's going to grow. So if you ask me from a standpoint, possibly the pandemic has given a different perspective to us as a lifestyle, the awareness, the health and wellness awareness, uh, which allies with sport sporting activities has uh, significantly uh, gone up only from an active engagement point of view. Right now we are putting sporting verticals into two buckets. One is the recreational sport and the other is active sport. Unfortunately, the active sport percentage is very low, but the increase of sports awareness and the recreation sports, health and wellness awareness, which has increased phenomenally in last year, year and a half, which has given us a hope that you actually put those things and make try and make a career in sport. Hopefully in the years to come, we'll probably see that shift and that growth because the numbers are there for us to uh, believe that we have a potential uh, growth and if we, if india is, is to become a superpower globally the only way up is to get ourselves engaged into sport we are great in technology we are fantastic in engineering we are brilliant in uh, science and medicine and other allied uh, professions sport is one vertical which combines all of it together and binds it to make a career so here's an opportunity for all of us to grow better in sports right so, Pratik, what where do you where do you see that you know sports in India versus sports in globe? Where do we stand? Um, so, I, I think you know. Firstly, thank you so much to be on this panel, and it's a real pleasure to be with Nilesh and Vineet uh, on this panel. Um, and you know, likewise, our knowledge is enhanced whenever we three speak to each other. Uh, for me, I would say that you know, India is interestingly poised as a very young country worldwide that's being discussed now that's a demographic piece that that has a huge advantageous play if positioned right are we getting it all right at the moment maybe there is a lot to be desired and that is where i think the youth of this country really come in and that's the opportunity uh, and that has to be questioned not everything that we have done is right and there is a lot to improve so coming from the standpoint of that cricket is phenomenally india's number one sport uh, but we can all throw light on the fact that has it retained its 95 to 99 percent, um, you know, of the money that is being pushed towards sport uh, in the last 10 years? I think a lot has, you know, kind of transpired and changed. Kabaddi has come in, uh, little uh, football is there, little plays of table tennis, volleyball has, you know, had a fighting chance, Coco is coming in. Maybe wrestling was right there. There would be mud wrestling coming in. And now this new entrant of esports. So I would say we are poised at a place where a lot can happen. And that's the, that's the play that I think uh, is the opportunity. But uh, we, need to, we need to question the right spaces of the right pieces. Are they going right? Is there more to be done? And what can be done in a very Indian way? Because, you know, I don't see Jugaad in my country as, a, as an ever a negative. I've never seen it and I don't view it like that. I feel that we do it because it is cost effective uh, and it's effective to the plan that India can, you know, jitni chadar hai, usi mein kaat ke aap apna kapda bana sakte. Now that is a, 
is an attitudinal shift, but it, it still has to stand out. So I would say, who thought about Kabaddi? Who thought that this would make anything? You know, uh, And it was done not with the kind of money that is actually spent in cricket or football in India. It was done with much, 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 much less year one. It's come to where it is today. So I think the positioning has to be right. It has to offer that right livelihood. And explosion is happening now or will happen in the next five to 10 years in the tier two, tier three towns and then go downwards. That means it opens out another 200 to 500 million people who will then come into this market to be able to be entertained with sport. First is to play it, like uh, Nilesh said. There are two sides to it. One is that can you play it and experience it? And the next is to be entertained by it. So both those factors are going to have a, a spectacular effect on the spill-off of what is possible. That's my take to it. Great. Great insight, Nilesh and Supratik. Now, if I consider this scope and all, it's all going to be of no use. There is no business of sports is concerned or business of sports angle is not getting added into it. So, Binay, I would like to have your perspective from the business of sports side. Where do you see India is standing today? Okay, so thank you, uh, first of all, uh, IIT Bombay to having us here. I mean, it's absolute pleasure. Uh, uh, I think uh, Sunday afternoon well spent, uh, let me put it that way, okay? I'll instead of jump to jump to the topic and I'll just build on one point Nilesh way made and one point uh, Supratik made, and then I'll come to um, Amitavasar's question in terms of business because to me, business is uh, is one of the aspects which possibly come is very important but comes a little later in the in the time when it comes to building a sporting ecosystem. Uh, so to say. So Nilesh made a very interesting point that uh, to for us to be able to be successful uh, in sports around the world, uh, it's important for us to play sport. Now just to, I mean, if I'm not wrong and let's jump in if this number is wrong, but I think, I think only 3% of Indians uh, actively play sport. Less than 3%. And, oh, okay. So it's less than 3%. Okay. Now for a minute, now look at it from a, from a numbers perspective, if you're talking about Less than 3%, look at the headroom, okay? So just that's one, one data point, right? Uh, Supratik made a very interesting point uh, uh, by saying the about average age group and we're a young country, okay? So just to put that into perspective, 50% of India is, is below the age of 25, okay? Uh, to me, if I, my, my reading uh, suggests that on an average, uh, what it means is about our average age group is about 26.8 years. Now look at the look at the phenomenal uh, advantage or or uh, or a lead up that we have as a country. Okay, if we have less than 33 percent people playing sport, when an average age group is about 26.8. Now the, the the entire story is about getting this 60 odd crore people, give them an opportunity to play sport. Right now now that's a that's casted in stone. That's a reality because if you don't play sport, you don't win. And if you don't win, you, you don't become a sporting nation, right? You, don't, you can't become a sporting nation by, by watching things on television. I mean, that's not possible, right? Now, if I have to put these two data points in perspective in terms of what do we need to do for, for these people to play sport, for these people to play competitive sport, right? Is we need a very, very strong uh, programs at a school level, college level, university level, at your state level, Jilla Parishad level, Tehsil level, whatever you may want to see. As and when you create structures bottom up, okay, is when people will get the chance to play sport. And once you get chance to play sport, your competitiveness or competitive spirits obviously uh, take wings and, and it, it brings aspirations to a lot of people, okay. So at this stage, I believe that um, at uh, movements like uh, Khelo India, Fit India, is something which government of India is doing very, very aptly at that, that level. But I think lot, lots that we can do within our own self, right from an education point of view, which, which Nilesh is doing, okay? And all of us actually need to motivate people to create structures bottom up. Sukrat, Sukrat, Sukratik also made a point on cricket. While it's a number one sport, a um, lot of people that I meet say, hey, boss, we are a one sport nation and people are apologetic about cricket being the number one sport. 
I think why should we apologize? We should be proud of we being uh, uh, cricket as a number one sport. And if we as Indians are driving the momentum and monetization of cricket around the world, so be it. I mean, it's absolutely fine. What can we learn from cricket? Okay. Uh, the points that I made about how are we motivating people, engaging people to play more and more sport. That's exactly what cricket did, right? The structure that cricket put together right at a school level, at a university level, at a Ranji Trophy, Dilip Trophy, Rani Trophy level, actually motivated people to embrace cricket as a sport because it also gave parents an, a, a, a belief that my child can actually be a cricketer and make a living out of cricket, right? It also builds careers. So these are multiple different issues that we need to somewhere segue uh, into, uh, into into the right uh, right framework for we to eventually call ourselves a sporting nation and for, uh, for ourselves to become one of the invincible countries uh, in the world of sport. I think we have, we have a massive advantage. Uh, the debate, the question is, how are we going to create this advantage into actual reality in terms of winning uh, at the world stage? Yeah, great, great insight. Now, when we are talking about global aspect and the Indian skill set, I think the journey of IASM, that is a classic example. I would like you to talk a bit what gap you observed in global aspect and Indian skill set and which gave you thought to start IASM, the course in for Nilesh. I think uh, I'll just build on a couple of things what Vinit and Supratik also said before I go to that. See, I agree with uh, you know the numbers which are uh, disappointing to say the least in terms of participatory sport. One of the areas as a mandate when I'm part of the National Sports Education Board is to integrate the sports education policy into national education policy. What is happening is, Vinit rightly pointed out, there is no defining pathway from school to higher education and there is no credit point transfer which is a global practice for you to opt out to make a career in sport. Right now, it's more recreational, it's more individually driven passion. If the principal is supporting for a kid to, or the school to pick up sport, they do that. It's not mandatory because there are no credit points to gain and then define your pathway. Even if they aspire to make a career in IIT, they will still get those credit points becomes handy for them to create a pathway for themselves in life. And likewise, there is the recreational and active sport. But if you make it broad based, it has an opportunity. So one of the challenges when, when we decided to introduce ISM was there is no data. There was no data available in India for us to think that how do we put a structure? You talk about technology, there's a benchmark of IIT. You talk about management, there's a benchmark of IIM. And then based on those, the engineering colleges, IT and engineering divisions got uh, exponentially grew, uh, grew, they grew in the industry. And likewise, when I am established, I am XLRI, the top two management institute, people started making, people started having the awareness that, look, there is a career to be made in these verticals other than BA, BCom and BSc. So for me, this is something which sport as an, as a lifestyle, sport as a career path, which requires defining pathways right from the school level. If they acquire those credit points, they can continue playing and they can pursue their management or engineering degree to make sure they do not compromise. If you're good at uh, academically, you can still, we have a classic examples in cricket like uh, Kumble and Srinath and Srikanth who are engineers, but predominantly they come from South because the traditional perspective of parents is to pursue academics and then play sport. Other than uh, those couple of examples and couple of other sport, we do not have those heroes who we can idolize and pursue profession and passion together and make a successful career. So one of the challenges we faced at ISM was pr primarily that. Right now, the current stat over the years for all the viewers is uh, staggering. 75 to 78% of our students' strength come from active playing sport background. And they are national, international and state and district players. So just to give you this year, we have more than 22 to 25 international athletes who are pursuing management degree. For me, that's encouraging because they're parallelly managing, pursuing their passion and making a profession in sports. So once they finish their act, uh, sporting engagement, they will get involved into sports. And this is how sport will grow. This is how the back end of sport will also establish not only the front part. Likewise, when Vinit and uh, Supratik mentioned the very interesting fact of uh, the age of 26 to 28. For me, 
that's the retirement correct me if i'm wrong supradeep that's the retirement of uh, e gamers and what do you do after that is something which you need to think about while you are pursuing your sporting engagement and for me this is where education makes a huge difference for you to fall back on and make a successful career in your liked and loved field this is where i personally feel the recreation just to give you some stats uh, because i'm part of those boards maharashtra itself has more than 2 uh, lakh schools in maharashtra and the qualified coaches which are officially published by the government of maharashtra sports division is only 93 to 94 look at the opportunity and this is very concerning in terms of on one hand what we all are discussing about sport is growing sport has a potential and an opportunity but are we doing enough to create those heroes not who play but those who manage across all the verticals from training coaching managing operations marketing across verticals right now we need probably is a better person to give us an insight that are the group m who is a global uh, uh, dominant force are keen to have sports professionals taking up the job into the companies established companies like group m or u mumba and other uh, areas because that's where i personally see the growth will define not only into the state not only into the federations not only at the grassroots level it requires across all spectrum because to make one top saina nehwal one top pv sindhu one top sakshi malik one top abhinav bindra you require at least 25 people minimum to 50 people who work behind them to make them that and if we talk about multiplying those numbers of you require 20 saina nehwals 20 pv sindhus and 20 abhinav bindras Look at the opportunity and one of the biggest drivers, if according to me, is going to be the technology who will bring in change. And from an academic standpoint, from an ISM standpoint, these are the areas I see as a growth opportunity for aspiring students uh, uh, who want to make a career in sport. Great. Where do you see ISM 10 years down the line? <laughs> well, in the last 10 years journey of ISM, uh, we failed, we learned, we applied, we improved. We failed again, we learned, we got the guidance from Supratik and Vinik to better it and we improved upon that. So this has been the last 10 years journey. But for next 10 years, I see a fast tracking mode because uh, as, as Indians, like Supratik was mentioning, we use word Jugad in a more productive way, more progressive way than the negative part. And this is where I see we have learned, we started compiling we started having data for references. We started creating data. And I see, I aspire to be the IMs and the IITs of the world in a sports management space for ISM in next 10 years journey. It may happen, it may not happen, but it's worth keeping a highest goal. Great. Uh, my next question will be Supratik and Nilesh both. Now, there are a lot of data, there are a lot of varying data points which are floating in the market in terms of the pre-COVID versus post-COVID. Where do you see the difference in both the time frame? Where what is the opportunity lies? To so put them start. Okay, I'll go first. Yeah. So uh, I feel um, that you know the 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 um, the sport which are well IPL is already there. You know, the, uh, so as far as professional, I first let's address the professional part and the you know the. Uh, the youthful amateur or the ones who are aspiring to get there. Um, so cricket, you know, has been able to do it and the bio bubbles are working and, you know, we also need to see it in the same light. So I would say Kabaddi should be back um, in the middle of this year. Uh, progressively, that's where it is moving to. So I think that's an opportunity. Um, all the other sports that are actually looking and vying at that space I would say it might take till 2022, mid of 2022, before it actually comes full swinging back. In the whole milieu of the, the piece is, um, I, I, I would want to bring in the gaming piece because, you know, this is a, this is a very, I would say it's, a, it's been a silent opportunity. It's, it's been similar to what I would say, um, what, what, what Amazon and, you know, platforms have been able to do with the shop. Um, from, you know, 
Jio being able to place it, Big Bazaar wanted to come in, and they've all done effectively the best pieces. Today, we don't tend to miss as much as going out to be able to shop than what we can do online. And many will actually choose to stay there. And that's an active conversation that many have already tasted the simplicity of it. Similar is the piece of actually gaming as well. That youth today, there are two parts to the body where are effectively that how I see sport and a lot of athletes also see it is that there is the body and the mind part. The body can be trained for physicality, but it can be done only for maybe hour, two hours at high intensity for any trained athlete in a day. Then you can have all the things around and ancillary pieces, which are another two or three hours. Now for the mind on the opposite side, you can do it for slightly longer is how I perceive it. Because you can do it at breaks of two to three hours, but you can pursue it for maybe four or five hours if you're being able to pursue it at a highest level. That offers esports a big opportunity, and which is where it has been. And a lot of youth in India have actually chosen this path as well because it is easily accessible. Number one is the, is the great space to be able to play it. Two is the interactive, uh, interactivity of it, you know, that you're able to interact with your peers much more. Uh, you're able to find the like-minded souls in your own space. And in each of the RMG or the uh, FPS, so the first person shooter and the role-playing games, you're able to kind of live a life which is also happening because of the devices. Now, it is like motorsport a few years back or many years back, I would say 50s and 60s, where people used to buy a faster bike and be told by parents that, Abhi isko pe chalana. not possible. Yeah. So it is similar. Today, the devices that are being provided are capable for any kid to be able to game, uh, you know, I'm just saying Fortnite. You give every kid who's in the urban setup has got a laptop or a device which he's using for education today. Now, you can't tell from, as a parent standpoint, that boss, is pay up video game, nahi khel sakte. I have an eight-year-old daughter. It is impossible. And I know not to be try to do it. All we try to is manage is the time that don't play it above a certain period. And weekends, mother has decided that this will be the standpoint. But from the from a standpoint of where this can be is an interesting opportunity for India. Do we have a AAA game from India? I can't think of too many or none. Raji is an excellent example of where Unreal Engine has been used to divine, design games. So there is, and as we go along, we'll discuss more. But I'm, I'm saying this is where the you know the, the silent opportunities are. What many things that you cannot see are actually the biggest opportunities in life. This is an old saying by Swami Vivekananda as well. That, you know, jo dikhta nahi hai, usme kuch alag aadhar hai, aur wo kuch alag aapko zindagi mein de jata hai. And that is the opportunity, which is what sport is also. When we played sport, it wasn't that you thought that you would get somewhere, and therefore you played it. You played just because you were so happy playing. And you cannot, you know... The, the, the smell of that green grass cannot be replicated all your life. Even today, when we go down, we are delayed, we sit in, you know, close to a cricket ground and smell that grass, we feel yeah, that is what got us going. It wasn't the prize, it wasn't anything else. So that's the passion piece, which is, you know, which is so important. So I, I would relate it back to your question as well, if that answers it in a slightly philosophical manner. We'll come into the deep business as we move along. Yeah. I'll just so, add, just Just sure. one point, Nilesh, before Please. you move. So, and also the, the big opportunity and the direct opportunity is where the Asian Games has recognized esports to be one of the active sports in 2022. That's that's to me a big segue into whatever you said. I mean, imagine people who want to be playing professional esports while the Asian Games have not uh, announced which game will they uh, eventually uh, choose to compete with. But yeah. 2022 esports is going to be one of the uh, competing games uh, in, in Asian games. I, I think that's a big segue, isn't it? Yes, it is. And and actually, uh, Vinit rightly put forward, from India, there is no game that is actually in position. There are a lot of new games that are therefore aiming at India that if this becomes, like I'm just giving you a flat-on example, Valorant by Riot Games. Riot Games has League of Legends. It's the biggest game in the world. But what they're positioning for India is Valorant and Wild Rift. Youngsters on this, whoever will watch this, Valorant is wanting to position themselves with mobile. Why? Because if India plays it, it'll be positioned for Asian games. Same will be for so many other games. I would say even Fortnite would want to be here because Fortnite also wants to position it as an Asia's biggest game. PUBG was right there, how it's getting. So 
it's an opportunity in the making. And in the mix, maybe in the next four-year run, we should have a few Indian games that are also being positioned for the Asian games. Creation, uh, players, the entire ecosystem of it, and the content piece. Great. Yeah. So before I before I move to Nilesh, uh, a quick message for the audience. The audience, those who are watching through Facebook, you are already getting a lot of insights. You can start putting your question in Facebook chat itself. Our IIT representative will pick and choose, and those questions will be shared with us. We'll try our best to cover as many as we can, if the time permits. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Nilesh, please continue. I think Carl just had a couple of points to Supratik and Vineet. Uh, you know, probably Vineet is in a better position to mm -hmm. give away the numbers, you know, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. The growth from a commercial standpoint for sport is phenomenal and staggering. And primarily, I'm just focusing on two sports. One is cricket and the other is e-sport, which created opportunities. One is physical and one is digital. I'm just comparing that in terms of how we can uh, have these two models for us to understand where the opportunity lies. And that's when we can define what Supratik mentioned about creating biosecure bubble and maintaining the entire hygiene, which has a flip side. All the teams have started uh, adopting different practices, all the players learn to cope up with the challenges. They've started having uh, the psychologists and the psychiatrists of the world to mentally prepare them and make sure that in the comfort space. But likewise, what uh, Vineet and Supratik just now mentioned, it created phenomenal opportunity for e-gamers and for Asian games and potential Olympic, uh, uh, which is welcoming uh, as a sample for e-sport, e which it, it itself is an encouraging. Some of the numbers which Vineet will be able to share it with us purely from a growth standpoint of the broadcaster encourages sport, not only cricket, but like Supratik mentioned, the sport like Kabaddi, football, has a potential to generate revenue and give it back. So there's a live sport. One of the key components, which in my opinion as a sports person, I personally feel which requires highest amount of priority is the intensity of the competition. If the competition is intense, the viewers will hook into this. And if the viewers hook into it, People like Vineet will guide us in terms of the numbers, how the numbers grow purely because of the rating increases, the sponsorship uh, benchmark increases, and all the allied thing which makes sport establish gives us different dimension. And you put that into the same comfort of the first class cricket which BCCI announced with the Sayyid Mushtaq Ali and uh, Vijay Hazare trophy. Again, without having a single drop of uh, Corona case, successfully delivered the first class cricket also, which allows you the intensity of the competition, which gets viewed on television, the Hotstar uh, viewership has increased, the Sony Live application, Sony Live uh, viewership has increased. So not only the Amazon and the Netflix of it, but the broadcasters, uh, digital platforms, OTD platforms have given us hope that there is an opportunity from revenue as well as the intensity of the sport has a potential to grow in the, in the country. I mean, Vineet and Supratik, please guide if I'm uh, on the right path of the numbers and the context of it uh, with regards to these. No, no, Great. spot on. Yeah, yeah it's a... Great insight. Uh, on the recovery side, so Vineet, if I see a lot of talk is going on that, you know, there is a V-shaped recovery, so a lot of economics are agreeing, there are a lot of economics not agreeing. But if I talk about a holistic recovery of the economy, sports is definitely is an integral part. So do you see it's a V-shaped recovery for sports or you see it's too scattered or probably too early to comment? So I think uh, Supratik very uh, aptly covered it and uh, he said that he, he expects it to be somewhere by middle of 22. Uh, even I believe so. I believe uh, 2021 also will be a year uh, where we will not see that kind of a, a, a live action on ground at least. Okay, while... While there are great examples predominantly in cricket where uh, right from a local level to the international level, the bio bubbles have worked worldwide. But I somewhere think the emerging sporting economy was anyway a new economy uh, in India. Okay, uh, We have seen a very successful ISL though. Okay, We have seen an extremely successful ISL uh, right from November onwards till, uh, till about last week. Yeah. Uh, but from an audience interest standpoint, uh, see, we are a very, very different nation. We need to be, we need to be into it for us to embrace, embrace these things. And as Supratik rightly said, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Kabaddi will be back in by, by June, July, August. Uh, uh, having said that, uh, 
I think uh, from a from a fan engagement standpoint, uh, it's a it's a complete reboot, yeah. Okay. So all the all the efforts that uh, that were well taken by the likes of ISL and PKL will have to go all over again because this one year break, and I I still call it an emerging sport economy because cricket because we have seen a massive success of IPL uh, in 2020. Uh, we are we are on on the verge of. Another fabulous season of IPL in 21. Uh, so, so that, so, so that, if you leave cricket aside, I think, I think phenomenal amount of marketing effort, phenomenal amount of fan engagement effort will have to be, uh, it will have to go through uh, for the emerging sport economy to just take the. I'm not calling it any shape or at such from an economic standpoint for it to relive the the moments of pre-COVID. That's the way I will put it. Great. So, Nilesh was mentioning about this OTT platform and other parts. So, if I see the post-COVID major sponsorship is coming from Baidu's, An Academy, some eight tech-related companies or probably some, some of the tech-related thing. Where do you see the changes in the sponsorship trend? This is for you, Benet. Okay. So, uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, uh, okay. So, these trends are trends to do with the economics of uh, the way our country is going through. It's nothing to do with sport or anything else. I mean, uh, see, we all saw, if you look at the first five years of, of IPL predominantly, uh, you saw the likes of DLF, the likes of Vodafone, the likes of uh, uh, the Citibank and so on and so forth. The narrative changed a bit in the second ride cycle, okay, uh, from year six to year 10. Uh, and then you saw a lot of uh, a lot of a different kind of people uh, coming in from an advertising standpoint. So I think it's it's more of a cyclic change economically that we are seeing through. The whole startup culture to me will continue at least for the next right cycle, uh, if not more. And therefore, uh, you will see a lot of these uh, these challenging uh, challenging brands pushing the envelope for the traditional. Uh, or sporting investors uh, and 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 coming through. So if you look at the current right cycle, uh, you have Vivo on top, but you can look at the official partners. Like, okay, you have the likes of An Academy, you have the likes of Paytm, you have the likes of Cred. These are all new age tech companies. Uh, so therefore, I would want to believe uh, for the next five years, technology will play a very very important role. And if technology companies have to reach out to audiences mainly in the B2C space, okay, they will embark the journey of live sport because, because what we need to understand post-COVID for the right age group, and I'm talking about the youth predominantly, okay, which is which is on an average of about 26 years, okay, which is 50% of India, okay. Uh, appointment viewing for them uh, doesn't exist, if I may say, okay, at least in the in the urban India, it doesn't exist. Okay, uh, they don't need, they need to exist. Now, sport is the only content piece, is the only entertainment channel, which is going to go the appointment viewing route. The the else everything is going to go the streaming way, and that is a very very important point which we need to recognize, appreciate, and plan our strategies around. Because uh, and the reason why uh, myself, Nilesh, and Supratik is excited about. Uh, this session is because we believe that sport is the only, and I repeat, sport is the only programming on streaming and on broadcast which will garner appointment viewing. Because when it comes to sport, it's all about watching it live. Uh, and therefore, that's a very, very important point linking back to your question on, on the new age trends and technology companies who are going to be, it's directly, directly linked to it, isn't it? You look at Dream Eleven; that they have built a brand on the back of back of sport because obviously it's a fantasy league and all of that. I mean, the numbers are staggeringly high. So while we're talking about esport, uh, some of the some of the uh, uh, the growth stories are also in the in the fantasy league state uh, segment and in the in the in the uh, gaming segment, right? So that's that's going to be the trend that we see uh, for at least three to five years going forward. Great. By the My way, next, just for, your, yeah, just, for, just for our viewers, uh, Vineet and his organization actually dominates more than 90% of the sponsorship market in India. For, for all of you to actually, where he's coming from, from the stats point of view, it's important for them to also know why yeah. 
the growth and the perspective has a relevance because he actually drives those businesses and he is the one who pitches and makes them get into the business side of it so so nile sorry about that but this this number <laughs> is not true i mean that's a that's a sheer number of pressure that you put but i think the the real number in terms of our market share would be somewhere between 50 to 60% and i don't think it will go beyond 60% yeah just that business oh, analyst of the optimism of vinit uh, when he actually wants to put it across and not take the cake of uh, dominating in the industry <laughs> so i would love, love i would love to get that number uh, beyond 50 60% and reach to 80% that's the great ambition for myself to have but currently it's about 50 60% yeah great my next question will be for all three we have been talking about management we have been talking about the advancement we have been talking about fan engagement technological uses a lot of talks we have been and why the question is for all three because you have been experiencing uh, different games in different uh, countries you have been experience in game in india also and everything has a fan experience so if you could shed some light on with some specific example when you have watched game outside the management side of it the business side of it or probably the fan engagement side of it some one one uh, fantastic example i remember beneath you had an example of nba when you were in canada so some uh, it will be a fantastic okay, so i'll yeah i'll take this first guys and i'll give you my real example of sure, sure, okay? sure. it's an absolute real example uh, so uh, me with my family my wife and my daughter we we landed in toronto um, which was a mix of some work and some pleasure some vacation kind of a thing okay now now i am while be- being a part of the sports business okay Uh, i understand the dynamics of multiple sports but i am not a i won't qualify as a fan of basketball personally okay while i understand the nuances of basketball i understand what it means for india what nba is what nba means for the world when it comes to basketball i won't qualify personally as a basketball fan right me my wife and my daughter certainly not okay definitely not right we land up in we land up in uh, in toronto um, one fine day uh, having our own plans uh, which had multiple uh, combinations of academics work pleasure uh, and and uh, normally we at the airport where where wherever we go internationally mainly in the europe and the north american market we book our own car uh, and we just get the car from the airport and just go in the city wherever we want to go so we go to the go to the car terminal uh, we do all our formalities we pick our uh, rented car and at the end of the the entire check in process um, uh, the lady over there who was taking care of our uh, our uh, formalities just asked her so how many days are you going to be in toronto so we just said we are here for a week or so and she says okay great have fun in toronto and enjoy the game and just see she lives at that okay and we say okay enjoy the game we heard you i didn't bother much and i moved we take the car go to the go to the hotel okay do the check in formalities uh, great to have you guys in a hotel in toronto it's a great time to be here i hope you are going to be catching up with the game now second time okay second time in maybe what uh, on hours time okay uh, now that's when we come to know i mean to two experiences one hour both of them what game are they talking about okay that's when we google and we come to know that uh, there was the toronto raptors the final leg of uh, the finals in 2019 and that was in toronto in two days that we were there now the the reason i'm making this point the entire city the entire city right from the airport car terminal to the hotel check in counter to everywhere we went okay we obviously tried to book ourselves in the Uh, in the stadium which obviously we were denied uh, we tried to book ourselves uh, in the sports bar and with great difficulty making 20 calls we could get to a decent sports bar to watch that game but the entire city the entire city came together for that one moment okay now now we talk about fan engagement i think we need to pull back and talk about community engagement okay to me it was not fan engagement it was a community engagement where each and every person in that city was talking about that game now when we experienced that whole thing for a week the the entire city was working towards that night 
the merchandise. So I mean, my wife and my my daughter had no clue about Toronto Raptors. They had not even heard the name of the team, right? But we ensured we buy the merchandise. We go to the sports bar with the merchandise, and definitely we were not Toronto Raptors fans. But the city, the the atmosphere, actually got us involved so that we were a part of them without being being the fans, right? Now that kind of a spirit. is something which only a community level building happens and that has to happen from the school colleges university level and that's the reason why when i made my comment in the opening address i specifically spoke about schools and colleges because you cannot suddenly get community involved uh, at your will it has to happen right from your childhood right from the way you grow the sport and therefore bottom up approach towards developing the sport is is something which i believe in the most and i keep talking to uh, nilesh pratik about uh, we in india uh, the cricket is big because cricket actually went the bottom up approach where they built the fan base before going the premier league approach uh, and and that's actually the formula in my head uh, to make uh, make most of the emerging sports uh, go big yeah that's it great nilesh you can go next okay your experience uh, <clears throat> i have three different experiences which i'm going to share and elaborate on one is obviously our own mumbai marathon as a concept you know by what we need to hop upon as a community engagement it started with the concept of asking people to run you know the boston marathon was the history behind it but to get more than 50 60000 people to come for one single morning for 3 hours of engagement and generate revenue and create an economy around it the entire mumbai city comes to a standstill itself is a community engagement and you know if you build on these things just for the viewers uh, stats there are more than 1200 to 1400 marathon pre pandemic used to take place across india so that's pretty much more than a three marathon a day which happens it's a staggering number look at the economy and this is where a person who participates pay to run and participate is a different model from a business standpoint but if you talk about the 12 to 1400 numbers surely it has different dynamics but i agree with vinith in terms of creating a community engagement and i put the same context into europe especially in england where i have experienced two different contrasting part one is obviously cricket where the experience of uh, you know the smooth entry the ticket the 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 seat which is selected which is a brilliant experience you talk about lords you talk about manchester even to chesterly street they have a same parameter which they maintain and put the same analogy into a marky event like wimbledon i have experienced multiple times what it all takes to prepare so their work of preparing for next wimbledon start a week or 10 days after the wimbledon is over to prepare for next wimbledon so the process of giving comfort to fan reengaging community so couple of people i had a contact with they they had their own businesses but the community got together they are assigned for a particular role to manage uh, the fans the manage the ticketing ma- any other activity which is part of the big event like wimbledon for athletes to fans to all the trainers to all the people ball boys who are engaged it is planned so meticulously their process of execution starts 3 months in advance so all the ball boys are given task all the referees all the people who are controlling the governance every single stakeholder is involved actively periodically it starts with probably 15 days in advance and then it comes down to almost every day so the process with technology support which is so precise that what we see on television is different but what you experience in wimbledon the change of the referees the linesman not the chair referee the linesman the change of the ball boys the transition is so smooth that you hardly notice them but they do not lose a second of the time also because of it happens in between the two games when they finish so the transition is so smooth and it's so precisely planned for me that's a learning in terms of adapting all the technologies and making sure the processes are in place and the third complete experience one of my friend owns a company in america 
and they are tied up with uh, baseball uh, stadiums <clears throat> and basketball stadiums the fan experience what vinith was talking about what they provide from the technology standpoint as that you are sitting into seat number x base so and so row so and so you can actually place the order from beer to french fries to burgers to pizzas by sitting there on an app and you do not lose a second of the match but you get everything service where you are sitting by giving the best of the experience so creating all these things is phenomenal great so prateek right so um i think you know uh, both vinith and dilesh have covered most facets of it um and i completely agree um the piece that i would like to address here is the fact that you know the international sport scenario worldwide looks at athletes as a full time career unfortunately where cricket is the only one in india where you have a full time career if you're playing for the state team and upwards and into a uh, into an ipl squad and you're being paid a you know very handsome sum and therefore the competition to be able to get in is intense for us i would say there is a big opportunity to look at the west to be able to bring here is like i'm just saying sport like kabaddi sport like volleyball kho kho uh whichever succeeds on television and maybe wrestling at a stat, you know at at a point as well we need to look at a full time plan for them which re- runs round the year with competitions which are all televisable now when vinith also mentioned which is a very very important point which was sport is the only thing that can actually drive uh, appointment viewing and this is what actually will attract all the ott and the television players to look at it because you can have a film release you can have the biggest star but is that going to drive people onto the platform to be able to download it and stay on hooked for it the platform themselves are beginning to question it and they have already questioned it which actually tells us that look then what is there then there is only live sport with appointment viewing that is possible which is why you will actually download the app pay the sum and subscribe for everything else but there is a big driver which is live sport and live sport can only work when it's a full time career as well because it's a life changing moment for the athlete nilesh put that point that you know why do you go to see a good sport because you're enthralled by the athlete who actually comes down there he just he just changes your perception of how well you can play whether he's a batsman or a or an anup kumar doing a you know a bonus that will you know you will you your jaws will drop that how did he pull that off same is for you know young footballers who are actually pulling off the stuff that they did on this i you know the isl the, the the final was a phenomenal one and i would say it's come now to a stand you know a, a point where we will we are enthralled same was for the volleyball players same will be for the wrestlers and the same it will be for esports so i think full time careers and this appointment viewing to be able to position the sport right are two massive opportunities that we actually should take from what is existing worldwide to bring back to india and like i would also say that i was in red bull before this and if you look at formula 1 finally with motorsport you would think that you know in india there is a lot of lame commentary on it also saying that oh he's just driving the 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 vehicle from point a to point b is that so exciting but what it actually does to you with the analytics and the play is just changes that sport to a whole new level and actually if anybody wants to do it the g force that is available on the car just kills you that is what drives you to it and today now next sport that is coming in and maybe be the like red bull owns it but it's called the air race it will be aircraft going through pylons this will dramatically change even what is investments which were possible for uh, formula 1 where you have to put a track together here it will be marine drive pylons up and off it goes with minimal investment then it will be drone racing which again youngsters in you know in institutes like the iit and everywhere else young kids have the dexterity now to be able to play with four fingers on a you know on a touchpad maybe six some are even being able to manage eight 
sorry my mother is no more but i'm just saying she had problem when she had you know one call coming on one finger if the if my daughter would say something as a granddaughter she would she had to switch whole opinion <laughs> stop that call and listen to it because they cannot do it i can't do maybe you know four fingers and a i can barely do two so this paradigm shift will also offer a lot of opportunities so all of it you know is 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 internationally available what we do with it is the big opportunity great my next question will be for nilesh now if i talk about the iit they are the best in their technology they have the best of their applied knowledge but how iit student can use their applied knowledge and technological skill in the advancement in specifically sports domain right now uh, when supratik and vinita are on the panel without technology sport do not exist in india that's the phenomenal shift which has taken place and you talk about you, you must have seen all the cricketers having some sort of a, a ridge on their back it's a chip which has been put in for all the data to be collected analyzed assessed and prepared a complete roll out plan what iit people just for all the students who are from iit we had couple of students who came from iit madras background and one of them who was shortlisted to work uh, with established organizations he decided to opt out and go the entrepreneurial way so he completed his iit journey but he still had a passion to make a career in sport he created a space for himself and now successfully doing so if you ask me we get about 25 to 30% if not more each year the batch size the student come from an it and engineering background and now there are opportunities which are created those who are oriented from a data standpoint they get absorbed as a data scientist so there are new opportunities which are created who have the skill sets so for me the way it works in sports without data there are a couple of ipl franchises who are smartly using that data to even use it for marketing strategies as well to pitch it to the 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 energy drinks or other things to give the perspective and use the analogy which uh, masters like vinith can obviously position and enhance it from a pitch standpoint but there is a data available for you and that data can be curated compiled and prepared and used it to an advantage not only for the athlete but across the platform supratik will be because he played uh, contact sport like rugby there are other areas which are probably not exposed to extract and that's where i see as a humongous opportunity for people like who come from a it and a technology uh, backgrounds can create a space right now even at the first class level putting it to a context of uh, cricket only restricting it to cricket only right from junior level every state association has invested in a data uh, analyst who gives a real time feedback for all the players right from advising them uh, to you know how they can actually approach the game what is their fitness levels what do they need to work upon how do they uh, you know manage the entire uh, relaxation part reserve energy to get it so all these technology technological support is helping immensely for uh, for all of us to experience in sports great on the same note you were talking about our iit student you were talking about the entrepreneurship but the challenge what is happening in india right now and this is the first and information i'm sharing because i have been closely working with iit bombay abuda and the other colleges lot of students come out with lot of good ideas which is related to either e sports or normal sports but the challenge is majority of the time they have been hearing that you know sports pe kya karoge the reason behind it that it's not the idea is bad is because the idea is not getting filtered or the monitored properly because there are lack of mentors i know you have started the first india sports entrepreneurship cell how colleges can get a support from isn or how students can materialize their idea specifically on the sports i will answer that first before i leave it to supratik and vinit uh, see we aspire to start something you know we started practicing something which is an established practice with the iits and the iims to form a entrepreneurship cell but without the mentors like vinit supratik and professor shetty and the industry stalwarts these ideas will not grow and flourish because the conversion percentage is very low but if the idea is good and with the support of right mentors you definitely have a future purely because people are looking out for investments and especially in the space of what supratik is currently operating the e gaming and the e sport and the fantasy it definitely has a future 
and uh, mentors like vinit and suprati can definitely drive the good idea forward and obviously if the idea is good with the good numbers and the good backing the financial institutions will support those ideas if it has a good convertible model so the mentoring aspect is extremely critical finding a right mentor like they always say if you're doing a phd if you don't get a good mentor and a guide your phd submission does not stand the same intensity but if you have a very good guide your submission your dissertation your public uh, you know publication stands very solid grounds in the industry and the same is applied uh, for for the entrepreneurship uh, as well for aspiring students who want to make their own uh, journey into the entrepreneurship great but i'm sure Any... then pradeep will have a different perspective uh, from an industry standpoint any any input from suprathik or vinith because this is one of the challenge area what uh, students across the college are saying that we don't find the mentors especially on the sports oh, domain so very quickly i'll just keep it very very short okay i do not have any doubt uh, in what i'm saying right now so i will break it up in two parts okay one is the entire broadcast and streaming part uh, is going to be driven by ar and vr or uh, a uh, uh, driven uh, uh, you know technology uh, uh, in in time to come it's already there in india it's taking up taking a bit of a while but uh, uh, absolutely uh, it will drive the entire ar and vr experiences will drive the whole technical piece for from a viewer a viewer interface standpoint from a athlete standpoint or from a fan engagement standpoint the entire wearables today i mean at least in the urban india you will see every second or third person having some kind of a wearable 100% all the athletes who are playing professional sports are doing it but uh, the the entire wearable the data piece the first party data even the second party data will come into play to actually look at how can i monetize each and every fan efficiently how can i enhance the entire performance in an athlete uh, going forward uh so, so just to keep it very very short today the entire indian olympic story is very very dependent on data and and i'm very very happy to say that there is a lot of data driven uh, uh training which is happening uh, in india already uh, and it's been passed on to the athletes today with the point that uh, so people are estimating that if if there has to be a olympic or a common or a asian game medal what needs to be your performance and your speed it's all on the back of first party data and what is av available in the universe right so i have no doubts in saying that technology will play uh, the center stage role um, in uh, in making sports a, a better viewable content in sport a better played sport from an athlete standpoint Uh, a sport which is better monetized from a fan uh, engagement standpoint so these are the three buckets i thought technology has a massive role to play any thoughts supratik yeah no i think uh, technology has a you know has tremendous scope here what i do feel is uh, two parts again to the whole thing one is young entrepreneurs or people with an idea uh and this i would just say from experience sure life living sometimes take time and therefore to always think that will it happen next year right now in the next two years i would say this company that i've started in 2014 was an idea in the back of my mind for 20 years um and i i don't know if it's uh, it's it still reached the potential that it has so for youngsters this is something that i have to stay and i think nilesh and vinith can also vouch for it that don't have timelines very strictly set that aaj socha to kal hi hoga waisi baat nahi athlete ki journey pe bhi wahi hota hai you have to stay the course the most important is stay dedicated stay the course and some time or the other something will result in it the other piece is actually when i look at even a basic sport uh, you know or or sport like kabaddi where we are beginning to use analytics but there is a lot of scope for growth there as well i'm just saying you know for a for a corner uh, player like a fazal atrachali when the first year when he came down we weren't able to pick him onto the squad there was a young student who came to me his name was anand and he said sir ye you know this this guy has a stepping power of being at the right place 
and he demarcated the whole court into 16 quadrants and was able to demonstrate for me that where his stepping was so important that he was being able to trap the best raiders as Indian raiders. And Fazal himself had broken it down and he was having these discussions with this youngster. Now, what I would say is, this is a remarkable proposition where it comes to technology, that why, why aren't we able to do more of it? Now, it is not just the quadrants, I would say height, level, speed, intensity, time of the game. If these begin to play out, which I still haven't found enough data on, the game will dramatically change. Uh, and that is how athletes are reborn with a new sport. And that's what's happened with rugby. That is what is happening with American football. Because a lot of data points help you analyze who's the defendant against what player. And this is just one sport. So just imagine the opportunity. But technology students have to see that and say that, can I deliver um, a product for this piece? And there is a challenge. So there is a fitment. So I, I would say there is a lot of opportunity there. We need to just see the right fits. And in esports, it's just other one. When it comes to the esports piece, then I'll tell you more. So great. I think it's already seven minutes past one, the stipulated time. And a great insight. Any message you want to pass to the IIT student and the people who are actually watching uh, the live broadcast? Who goes first? Uh, anybody can go first. I, I, I'll just step in and, and yeah, just on the esports piece, we haven't been able to get there much. But all I would say is there is a big opportunity for students from IIT. Unreal Engine uh, is one technology which is provided by, I would say, Epic Games. Uh, this is something that, you know, for most, they should watch this out because AAA games are not being made in India. We should be able to garner and make, and check out the game called Raji, uh, just made by 13 developers. These games, are this, this Unreal Engine, uh, the classes, I think, are 80 to 180 hours. That's it. And then you're able to master the course. These are opportunities for India to actually make a real thumping standpoint there. And with new age games like Fortnite, PUBG, improvements will continue to happen. But the big opportunity with technology mixing with eSport and gaming piece, why I'm bringing it to the last end, where technology is so important is that game publishers and game developers have the biggest advantage because they have an upside to play for, which is unreal. So who can do it in India? It's students who are based in these institutes that have to view it in the same way, but they have to come to work with artists and storytellers as well. The minute we are able to bridge that gap, I think sky is the limit. And that's where the biggest opportunity for this piece exists. So I will talk about two things. Uh, and I'm just segueing what Supratik just said that I've spent about a year uh, just analyzing uh, how the what the potential for esports is, gaming is in India, and I completely agree with Supratik that the entire upside is for the publisher, the developer. Uh, he he has the cake and the cherry too, right? Now the question is, I mean, as as technical expert, I mean, I, our country is driving the entire backbone of the IT industry worldwide. We know that, right? Can we translate that into into sport and segue? and just take off and create some fabulous um, stories around around games, publishing games, creating games, developing games, and and become one of the most invincible countries for uh, which, which actually gives back uh, the sports to the world. I mean, today we are looking at games coming from South Korea, America, Europe. Can they look for games from India? Okay, can we publish, can we uh, develop games which the world plays? Uh, I think I think that's one challenge for all of us, and and I think who else than the IITians to take up that challenge. So that's from an esport uh, point, and I completely uh, agree with Supratik. I think if we can do that, that will be that will be fabulous. Okay. The second is uh, from a career standpoint. I think I think there's a tremendous opportunity because sports has always been on the premium side of. Uh, a subscription, premium side of uh, any fan engagement, premium side of any advertiser interface, right? I would personally want to believe that at least for the next one decade, it will continue to be to be premium, right? Uh, and if it will continue to be the premium, uh, technology is something which we need to embrace and we just can't escape, okay? So therefore, uh, any technological uh, advancement, uh, 
uh, uh, experimentation, innovation, right in the in the viewer uh, viewer uh, 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 sentiment or into performance management from an athlete standpoint is absolutely welcome. I think one need gap where we all started with. I wanted to end my part with that. We all spoke about what's that one thing which will make India a big success on sports. I think how can technology help the very very subdued merchandising licensing story in India possibly can be another challenge for you guys. So we know our challenges on the ground reality in terms of merchandising. Can technology bridge that gap? Play a role for we be able to monetize match days. Very, very efficiently through merchandise, through ticketing, through multiple different avenues, uh, and 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 that's the reason I'm saying that we have 10 years to to actually take this uh, momentum up and create create magic through through our ability to understand algorithms, our ability to understand mathematics and science. On that note, that's all for me. Over to Nilesh. Great. Thank you. That's my batting order when I was playing cricket. So. Uh, okay, I'll break that into a small two pieces. Uh, what Vinit and Suprathik elaborated, I will probably go slightly different from a sport point of view. What we used to call as a one percent or extra, you know, if you give that one percent extra effort uh, in sport, the change is here to stay for us. Uh, our honourable Prime Minister uh, and the Sports Minister have thought about India to be into top ten of medal-winning prospects by 2028. If you have to put that as a benchmark. Remember the requirement we have from the people like yourself as an IITians and the technology driven people to create compiled data for everyone else to work upon and produce top athletes, create those competitive analytical perspectives for every athlete to work upon the areas which they think is a gap. And that gap can only be brought in with the help of technology, which is evolving, which is growing. You put together the fantasy sport, the e-sport, and the physical engagement of the, all the Olympic sport. And then, of course, cricket is layered up on top. But when you're talking and aspiring to be the Olympic, cricket is well sorted using technology to more effective met metrics from a player's perspective to the sponsors and the business perspective. But the other sport has a huge area to work upon. And people like yourself who are aspiring to make a career in sport using technology, Here's your opportunity because that's the huge gap. And in a demand supply ratio, if you create that kind of a space for yourself, the sky is the limit for the growth for not only yourself, but India as a sporting country to become a sporting country. We require as much as help possible to use that data into channelizing uh, methodologies to get the best out of it, not only for athletes, but the entire ecosystem to grow. Thank you. Great insights. And thank you, Nilesh, uh, Benith and Suprating for coming out and giving so much insights in the sports fusion and touching upon the advancement in the management and the technological angle. Thanks for the timing for this Sunday as well. And happy Holi to all. Yeah. For Amitabh, all uh, I just wanted to add to it with the please. IIT, with you, Nilesh there, and with Vineet, if we are able to put together a small think tank and can work towards e-sport with IIT, that will be a big opportunity as well. Sure. I'll be happy to take it ahead. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank absolute you. pleasure to be, to be here. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. For it was wonderful, the, to be, wonderful to be on the panel with Vineet and Supratik as always. Thank you thank for you. your time. Thank you. For, thank you. For, for, bye -bye. for thank the you. audience, uh, Happy Holi, stay at home. Don't take much risk. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.